Hey guys, uh, to get in today's uh, another uh, just November challenge. So I'm gonna do things I normally wouldn't do unless it was a, a challenge, and that's modeling with shaders. You make a lot of cool stuff, uh, but not always in the most efficient way. But uh, you can make some pretty cool effects. And today the the prompt was fluffy, so I decided to get kind of nerdy with it. Uh, it was just kind of what came to mind is the Tribbles in the really old version of Star Trek, the, the original series, um, which are just these fluffy balls that keep multiplying. And uh, yeah, so I'll show you how I put that together. As always, I'm going to go to Edit Preferences and then make sure Node Wrangler add-on is enabled. Uh, because I've enabled it, I already know it's uh, enabled, but just to show you, make sure that's checked. And that's already installed in Blender. Um, you just have to activate it. And then, <clears throat> then I'm going to go uh, switch this to cycles because we want to use displacement to change uh, so that we can shift the geometry with our shader. And uh, yeah, so we're going to go now that that's been set up. We're going to add material here, and then minimizing that under settings, we can add change this displacement setting to displacement only as always. And um, yeah, and so now if we go to render view, uh, we have this plane, and for the to give some geometry to work with, we'll subdivide it. I can just use a modifier to control two. If we look in that wrench, here's the modifier properties. So I just add that there, and it changes to simple so it doesn't smooth while while subdividing. And uh, yeah, so right here, I'm just gonna bring that down and then drag this over, and then use the shader. So. The first thing I'm going to do, I might usually start with the biggest shape. So I want to make a mountain of dribbles. I think that's more interesting. Um, so, but I, I'm, yeah, so I'm going to start with a smaller shape of that. So to do that, I'm going to use this Fortnite texture. And uh, I think out with 2.9, or maybe it was in 2.1, you have the position output. And that's really useful for uh, scattering things. So if I look at this uh, texture right here uh, this is based on it's just the coordinates uh, of the texture Wait. so input here's the texture coordinates uh, these are just different types of coordinates generated is the default which is just based on the bounding box of this and um, yeah but I wanted to use object which doesn't take into account the width but takes into account the position and uh, yeah, so there's no uh, mapping based on the width and height and length of the object. So if I subtract this, I get, uh, yeah, so I actually want to subtract that uh, object from the version that's broken up. And I can use that. So now we see like uh, these crosshairs. And that's the, those are the texture coordinates. that. We, so uh, this is a position. And basically, the position of everything is in the center. Um, so if I. If I use, uh, um, well, you'll see once I added a texture here, I'm going to, um, so I'm going to use this gradient texture based on that. And so it's repeated on each of these squares, but we want to rotate it um, on each of these. So to do that, I'm going to use a vector rotate node. And because I, I'm going to create a swirl, I did a slimmer thing, my cinnamon roll uh, video, uh, and I repeated them in the chocolates video. I used repetition in this same way in um, the challenge, the day where I made chocolates. Maybe that was like the second day or something. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, and then I, this is black because I need to make sure that this vector is in here. So we can see the results of that. If I multiply this, it seems to be uh, distorting just to, in the wrong place right there. So um, yeah, so what can I do about that? Um, that's uh, actually this is the z-axis, so it's the top, and hmm, let's see, let's work this out. There's something about the order that probably needs to change. Um, so I'm gonna use this as the output. So I want this to distort. Um. But yeah, so I want to multiply this by a gradient uh, to get that swirl, I believe. So 
I'm gonna plug this in the vector here actually. Uh, so now this angle rotates it. Yeah. Okay, yes, I'm back on track. So if I use a gradient and a sphere gradient, so that takes these uh, crosshairs you have right here, and it's gonna turn that into a sphere. Um, let's have a look at that. See, nice and smooth. And uh, if I just plug that into the angle, um, but yeah, but we want that gradient, that swirl to exist for each point. So, um, I mean, I suppose I could just use the distance right here uh, to get the same result. Um, yeah, let's, I don't know. Um, yeah, so let's try that right here. So we're getting that, starting to get that swirl right there. And uh, if I, yeah, so if I use this multiply the node, we can, adjust how swirly it is. So we know it, because this turned up to 26, it's pretty swirly. But yeah, these are texture coordinates, and so you can use that to distort and repeat things everywhere. Um, <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah, could have used this on my candy. Uh, Would have been useful when I was make, trying to make the candy challenge. Um, so yeah, and let's use a wave texture. I'm just kind of make making the fibers. It's uh, not perfect, but just kind of an interesting way. Maybe noise texture would make that interesting. Because um, then you have sort of some randomness for each of these. Um, yeah, so there's, you know, a swirly hair. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so that's the, the base texture for the fine details. And then, um, yeah, and this one's going to be pretty short because I think this is fairly simple, and I was just uh, feeling like taking it easy today, because usually these streams go for about an hour, and I, you know, it, it oftentimes is a challenge to keep it under an hour, but um, in order to, I just want to keep the whole thing going while still showing you, uh, like, how, just how to use things, but I think showing you how to have fun with it uh, is important too, so, you know, not, you know, taking it easy on, on some days I think is important, uh, important. Right now it's just in the viewer node, so that's why it's not displacing, so if we look at there, that's what we're getting. And we want it to, I prefer to have it emanate from the plane, so the displacement's in line with the plane. Uh, because right now the, that, where that mesh actually is, rather than where the shading uh, displaces it to, where it shows that it actually is, um, isn't lined up, so now it's easy. You know, I can make more sense of it when I click on it, if we make this mid-level zero. Um, yeah, and so that's a sharp line right there. We can adjust that with an RGB curve. And again, so we mentioned this in other tutorials, but if anybody new is watching, or if you missed this, which is totally okay, um, yeah, uh, you can add things with Shift A. Oh, and I, I haven't been activating my screen gas keys. Apologize for that. Um, and it, yeah, if I look over here, you can see them. And uh, so, um, Shift A to add a node, and then the letters underlined for each of them. And I'm just using Control Shift Click to um, select each of these. Oh, and so I'll move my reference over there so it's not blocking uh, uh, some of the shortcut keys. Because I guess the Shift key shows up down there. Cool. And then, uh, yeah, so this, this is going to be this mountain of trebles. Uh, you can make this really sort of make an interesting profile right here. And yeah, maybe not. Uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of cool. And uh, in my opinion, <laughs> can, yeah, it's okay to compliment your own work, right? Um, unless you're hoping for other people to compliment, then you, you know, say, "Oh man, it's so bad," so that other people will be like, "Wow, yeah, no, no, it's great. Come on, you need to give yourself more credit." Um, yeah, so if I plug object node in there, <laughs> we're getting this distortion is going off to the left. Um, and we can maybe fix that by um, subtracting uh, 0.5 from this. Just adding. Hmm. Let's try adding 0.5. Okay, interesting. So now we have that distortion with along with it, um, and then we can layer the the trebles on top. 
So um, I'm just going to use the, the Vornay bump here, right here. Keep in mind, like this bump isn't going to be perfect because it's shooting upwards uh, from these points, and um, like the, its curvature on top of this. So uh, oh, imperfect. Just keep that in mind. Um, so if I add the bump right here, I'm just going to plug that distance this distance in there, so that's that spherical texture, this uh, this texture that's coming out of this, so there's dis color, position, distance, um, yeah, and yeah, so there, it's doing the exact opposite of what we want, right, so let's invert that, so this gradient, it just makes the dark stuff dark and the white, the light stuff white, uh, and so I'm just going to flip that, so it does the opposite, uh, right? So it remaps uh, that gradient, um, and the mapping node does a similar thing. Um, and I think cardinal is good for creating nice arcs with just two nodes. I think. Um, and so if we adjust this. We can just see, uh, you know, the result. So yeah, great. We made a lumpy thing. How fun, right? Um, and if we, uh, yeah, so let's track down where that swirly bit I made was. So I think that's the gradient texture. Maybe, wait, what I do? Subtract, vector rotate, and then we used a texture noise, and then I guess I must have done something with the texture noise. Uh, or noise texture. When you're working in 3D, sometimes, you know, things flip around. And you, you know, just learn to think backwards. Um, yeah, so there's that, and we can adjust the detail if we want more fibers. Because it's just really stretched out, so it, that's why we're getting these straight lines, as we saw in the, the vector position right here. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and so we can just add that on top of this. Let's actually use the linear light. So, uh, Add just shift things up, and linear light uh, takes like the stuff above 0.5 up, and the things below 0.5 down, uh, basically. So they're just slightly different, but you could get a similar result by subtracting 0.5 from the second thing on the add. Uh, gives you the, would give you the same result. Um, yeah. So interesting. Interesting. So let's look at because this is we're giving a result I liked, right? And then this was messing things up. Uh, so maybe it's clamping it or Oh, so interesting. Okay. Oh, uh yeah, we need to switch these two values. So that's that's just wrong there. Um And this detail's so fine, like you may even be better off just using a bump node um, because it's such fine detail. I subdivide that again. Every time you subdivide it, you're doubling the amount of geometry. So uh, keep in mind uh, that that just gets bigger and bigger. Like on a curve, it just shoots up. You know, so um, try to you know keep that in mind when you're adding subdivisions. If it starts slowing down, that's probably why. You know, so then you can just decrease some divisions. Um, there's even an operation in mesh, one of these. Uh, I mean, if you can't find it, just search unsubdivide. If you can't find it, like, I can't. I don't see it. Maybe it's because it's a edge thing. Unsubdivide, nope. Let's try face. Um, so, hmm. Edge. Unsubdivide right here. Oh, there's a dash. So on dash. On um, yeah, unsubdivide. And then you can go down in subdivision, and that only works if you have all all quads. Um, because you know, if it had, you have like weird n-gons or triangles, it can't. It'll, it might try to make sense of that, but it won't make full sense. So yeah, there's our swirls. We're getting kind of cool, like stylized smoke, um, which I'm liking. But um, yeah, we want troubles. So um, 
I'm going to use a uh, principal shader right here. Oh, and set the light so we can just, we just then we won't have any idea what's going on with the texture. We have to move that up because this is actually snapping to the plane that we can't see right here because this isn't this geometry isn't real. <laughs> wow, this is. <laughs> I'm liking this. Uh, this is a genuine reaction. I, I haven't uh, tried doing this yet. Um, so that's, <laughs> that's kind of funny. Just looks wild. Um, I'm just experimenting with more noise. And I like that you can see the details in there. So maybe. Yeah, I like when this, you can see where the swirls are, but if I turn that up, also this roughness isn't doing anything if the details are not existent. Um, yeah, cool. But I think, yeah, I think we want, for realism, gonna have to turn this down. Sorry, guys. And then uh, for this effect, and then let's add some wiggle to it, some, rather than more detail or, or something. So um, I'm going to use a noise texture. And, you know, either noise or musgrave could do the job here. I'm going to try musgrave. You know, musgrave just differs from noise in that it's directional detail. Oh, and right now multiply, that's the wrong I want. Linear light, again. And right now this noise is pretty big, so it's not, uh, yeah, let's adjust the scale and see how that looks. So now I'm previewing the material right here. So this is what I'm seeing, but, um, yeah, let's look at this texture so we can actually see what's happening with the texture with that distortion. So I'm going to turn that down quite a bit. Um, swap that so uh, shift s to swap and then that shift a menu comes up where you where you pick a node to, to add um, okay yeah so that's looking kind of fuzzier messier you know so I'm liking that and then uh, I think that'll be good for that. And then, if we look at the final thing, maybe, maybe we'll just double down on that top texture. I mean, it's, I guess it's not good practice to use the displacement with the bump. I think having them do the same thing, but anyway, I'm gonna do it. So shade smooth, and we're getting this extreme shading because this isn't how you plug in your normals. You need a bump node in between this, uh, or normal map node if you're using normal map, but. Uh, in this case, yeah, so remember the bump is just the deepest part and the light is the lighter parts. So when you're making a texture, don't just use any image. Just a little tip about shading in general. Um, you know, bump isn't just a magical conversion to normal maps, unless you're using a real height map. So if I, maybe I'll, we'll turn that up. Hmm. Okay, and then let's create some variation these trebles so um, I think I want you know I want variation per treble most of these are brownish and there's like one white one but I can use this color output um, control that variation so it basically just kind of looks like this um, but like these are living things with like you know kind of different so if I bring these close together maybe I use uh, a curve then there's more of a natural variation than if it was linear or uh, constant like that so just you use you know, B-spline yeah so <clears throat> I'm going to again multiply this texture here maybe I'll use the color so I get a different seed uh, 
So because this is black and white and this is color. So if I separate this, I can uh, get different values for each of these. Uh, so we'll get in different places. So I, because I want the bump to be independent of the color. Um, and then I think I'll let's use yeah. So another another linear light. My favorite note, I guess. Um, I guess. So um, if I look at that color. Uh, So there's kind of more variation in respect to color, and yeah. So, and then I think I'm gonna kind of fake ambient occlusion again using the distance output on this Vernoy. So I'm just gonna do that uh, by darkening. So multiply that. This is another mix uh, node, and this setting makes it so that the darker parts become dark. So if this was black, it would become, and I turn this all the way up. This would become totally black, the fact, uh, and then uh, white would just reveal, you know, the thing before it. So that's super useful for this. And let's see this one. Oh, so I already adjusted the bump right here, but yeah, that's. Oh, I want just the complete gradient and more control. So I'm just going to use another color ramp right here, and. So if I sampled this one, again, we can see that it's flipped. So let's flip that. Um, and then let's use Cardinal. And yeah, so if I multiply this right here, you can see the outcome. So yeah, we're still getting these little crevices there. So. Um, It's a little fakey, you know, but uh, in that, so right now it's looking like a nice lump of, of uh, plastic or, uh, you know, plastic meatballs all melted together. Super useful, right? But if we turn up the subsurface, maybe we can make it feel a little more natural. I think I'll use the actual fibers from... So we want the lightest points to have more of the most subsurface, so that's going to be in line with uh, this noise texture. So the highest points will have the most subsurface. Um, the subsurface is where the, the light bounces in under your sh the surface and brings out different colors. Um, so like your, when you shine a flashlight through the skin, you get orange. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to tighten this up. And hmm. and then let's check out the colors. We kind of have to wait a little bit for it to sort itself out. Um, Try plugging it into subsurface color. So now the these are the same thing, which you don't really want. Like it doesn't make sense to have them the same color because this one won't show up unless it's a different color. So we'll just shift it, maybe more yellowish. I know this isn't like in here, but like typically with hair, you know, it's uh, it shifts a little bit. Like brownish hair has some yellow or orange in it often, or dark hair has some brown in it. Um, yeah, so that's important. So there you go. From a distance, you have this. Uh, if uh, <laughs> it's you know a pretty ugly result, and uh, it was a pretty ugly target, to be fair, I th you know. So um, you know, if this is the first tutorial that you've seen, please watch any other tutorial. This is possibly one of the worst results. Uh, but yeah, that's November. That's uh, daily challenges for you. I'm. I just want to do something for it every day, and uh, you know, you know, feel like I can I can get through it all. So, um, yeah, there you go. Um, thanks for watching, and have a great day. So, bye.